Good morning, welcome back to the Dango's Outdoors YouTube channel. If you're new around here, ever think about subscribing. I do almost weekly videos now, so it's well worth clicking that button. Right, that's the advert over. <laughs> I'm out perch fishing today. I've come to a local commercial where in a specimen carp pool, the perch get neglected and in the winter, they grow big. And you're allowed to fish them at this time of year. You've got to ask ahead, which I did. And they're happy for you to come if you've got other gear for if you catch a big carp, because you know there's 20s and 30s in here. But the perch grow massive two, three, maybe even four pound. My goal today would be just some nice big fish, pound and a half, two pound, that'd be lovely. I've got a ledger rod set up and a float rod. Time to get to it. First thing I'm gonna do is just drop a ledger rod down this right hand side as a sleeper rod, put it on alarm, then I can focus on the float rod. Get a bike, lads. Nah. Well, just as I was putting up a brolly, lads, the bloke goes under, we've got a good fish on. This is a perch, it's a big one. It is a perch. Come on. Yes, 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 that's a good fish. Well, this fish is a certified chunk. Sorry if I'm all backlit from you being under the brolly and that, but just the way it is, it's raining now. So, here we are. Fix that stripey. I'm gonna just quickly put weight on this one. Pound ten, something like that. I'll take that. The old shampoo for pound ten. There we go. Long time since I've caught big perch. One pound ten ounces, just short of two pound, which is sort of a personal target to myself today. But that's gorgeous. I thought it was a carp when it first uh, <laughs> first bit. Whoops. Lovely. Let's put it back. Here she goes. Back to a. Uh murky little home. Oh, it's ready to go this one. So I'll just turn the net over. There we are, lovely. Right, let's get back under the brolly. Well, I've just had a bit of a tiff off, but the left hand side is better than the right, so I'm gonna move this rod over there. Here we go, boys. Got one on here. What have we got? Ah. Just a little roach. So I'll switch to maggots just to see if there's actually some fish in the swim. And there's a <laughs> little silver roach. Lovely bat. We'll pop it back. Okay, float's disappeared. And we're in. messing about my ledger rod, trying to get a bite on that, and the float's gone. This must be another nice perch. It's coming up now. Yeah, nice perch. Brilliant. <laughs> there we go, fish number two. There it is. Definitely gonna get a quick weight on this one as well. That's a lovely fish. <laughs> like peas in a pod. Pound 11, that one. There we go, lovely specimen this one, real red fins on it, one pound 11, and check out 
that spiky dorsal. What a nice fish. Going to get some pictures of this one for sure. We've got some weird angles today because I can't get my spike that I normally put the camera on in the ground. So you're going to be up at me, down at me, all sorts. But since I've just caught one, I thought it'd be a great time to show you the baits that I'm using. So I've only got three with me. I've got maggots, worms and prawns. The maggots I'm mainly using just to sort of feed the swim. I'm not putting them on the hook particularly. And not just for perch. I want them to attract silverfish, small perch, all sorts. That'll bring the bigger perch in. And then I've got a few worms left over from an old session and they're, they're a great bait but the best, what I've found the best, particularly on commercials, prawns. A big prawn like that is a brilliant hook bait and I'll either float fish it or stick it on a ledger and I just find that they pick out really big perch and seem to only catch perch as well although you know the odd carp does come along but I won't say no to that. The roach and things like that, the silverfish at least, tend to ignore these and I think the perch mistake it for Maybe a little bit of fish or crayfish that's damaged, something like that, I don't know. But they work really well and they're so selective. What I do is I put one of these on, chuck it out there and I just sit and I leave it. Because I know that when that float goes under, it's going to be a big perch. Yeah, those are my free baits. I sometimes make up quite like a fishy, prawny ground bait as well. But you can only feed ground bait in a feeder or a pole cup here. And I've not got one of those. So yeah, I'm just sticking to the loose feed and I've caught two already. There's my next prawn on, let's get this out there. Just fishing a few feet over the marginal shelf. I'll show you the rig later to catch a couple more fish because at the moment I just want to keep my hook baits in the water where the fish are. I'm going to give the worm a go. Well, I was bored, so I'm just going to have half an hour's maggot bash in and see what we can catch. There's our first one. Nice roach. Well, you know it's hard going when you're even struggling to put a roach on the bank. Here's a leaf. <laughs> so what I'm thinking is if, if I'm having to sit it out to get a bite from even just a roach, I'd rather be sat waiting for a big fish. So I'm going to put the prawns back on, put it out there, and just hope a perch comes along. I might as well show you now the rig that I caught all my fish on. So it's a sliding float rig. I've gone for a slider because it's about eight or nine foot deep out there so it just helps to fish for depth to have everything down in the bottom half of the rig so it's a lot easier to cast. Also when you put a heavy bait like a prawn on your hook, if this was fixed like nine foot up the line you'd even have two weights plump like pendulum through the air, it just wouldn't cast very well. So yeah it makes it a lot easier. It's quite windy today as well so a slider float, all that weight down the line acts like a bit of an anchor so this isn't drifting around as much. Yeah that's a theory, it's worked twice for a perch and I've had a what, three or four roach now. So I'm gonna put prawn back on, sit it out there and just hope I get a big one. Finally hooked one on the ledger. This could be a better fish. Bobbin was just going up and down like crazy. Whoa, this could be a big perch. That's a 
That's a nice one. Yes! That's free. A hat trick of big perks. I wonder if this one could be my two pounder. <laughs> I'm a very honest angler. One pound fifteen. That's amazing. There it is. Biggest one of the day. Not quite as washed out as the other ones as well, which tends to happen in murky commercial pools. A little bit darker, really nice fish, good vivid stripes on this one. I love it. Really red, really red fin on this, this perch. That is gorgeous. Let's see the fin. Proper battered. <laughs> Real commercial worry of this one. That's a tongue twister for you. Right, couple of pictures and slip this one back. I'm just gonna walk this big perch couple of swims away from where I caught it. Never really believed it myself, but people say that if you put big fish, especially perch and things like chub, back in where you caught them, they spook the rest of them. So I've just come a couple of spots down. And we're gonna pop it back here. Off you go. Oh, straight away, brilliant. Since it's raining again, I thought I might as well show you the little ledger rig that I'm using. And for once it is actually really simple. Just a, quite a light sliding bomb there. And on this one, the eye of a swivel is pretty large. So it's really good at cutting down on resistance because if a perch feels too much weight when it picks up the bait, it'll drop it. That goes down to a little quick change bead, nice little neat way of uh, attaching your main line to your hook link. At the top of the hook link, we have a twizzled loop. Now this prevents tangles, but it also acts as a little bit of a shock absorber. So as that straightens and comes back on itself, all those little head shakes that a perch gives, that'll absorb that. And then the hook link itself is about two foot long, which is quite long really, but it gives the fish plenty of time to move around before it comes against the weight of the lead. So it leads to much more positive takes. And as for hook, got a size six mixer hook there. So it's a surface fishing hook, it's quite light in the wire, but it's very strong, it's got a really wide gate which helps to catch hold in a perch's mouth. So what I've been doing is taking a prawn and I just thread it on through the fin end and if you go through some of the segments of the prawn you get some nice muscle to hold on to and to keep that on I just thread on a rubber maggot. There we go. So that rubber maggot will help to keep everything on the hook, stop the prawn from sliding off. A little bit more colour as well, a bit of a flash of attention there. And yeah, that catches a lot of fish. You do get a lot of drop takes on ledger rigs for perch, but the way to cut down on that is use a really light bobbin. I've got my lightest cart bobbin on. There's no metal on that bobbin at all. So the perch can pull it up and down really easily without feeling it. And yeah, that's the sort of take I got. Right, let's put it back out there. Got another one, lads. <laughs> Brilliant. Whoa, nice fish. Real good bite again there. Bobbing going up and down like crazy. And this has got to be a good perch. Hanging deep. Deeper. Oh, what we got? Yes! Come on. Barely hooked. Back of a shed. <laughs> that hook has already come out. Right, big perch number four. Not gonna weigh this one. If those others were a pound ten or something, I reckon we're looking at just under a pound and a half, something like that. Really nice fish. Love catching big perch. Let's do the classic dorsal fin. There we are. Oh, good dorsal fin on this one. Yeah, 10 out of 10, would recommend. Lovely. What have you been eating? <laughs> All my bits of prawn. Let's put it back. 
maybe there is something in this hole releasing them in another swim because uh, I got this bite fairly quickly after the last one. Away. Just rebaiting my rod, something very interesting just happened. Big carp stuck its head out out there. Proper fish that, double figures plus definitely. It's a little bit milder today, it's been freezing cold these last couple of days. And yeah, this little bit milder temperature has got a carp up in the water. I think we're gonna catch from now on out. <laughs> we are down to the last sort of 30, 45 minutes now and it looks really good for it. I've actually just caught another one, but I didn't film it or anything because I was talking to another angler while I was trying to put my brolly up. There's just all sorts going on. The least I needed to do was mess about the camera, but just a small one, smallest one I've had, had all day, maybe just over a pound. But yeah, looking really good for maybe one or two more fish before I go home. Keep my fingers crossed for a big one. The float has just about disappeared, guys. Let's wind down. Yes, we are in. It is chucking it down. Right, let's see if I can do this from under the brolly. No, I think I'm going to have to go out there. Oh, I'm getting wet. What is this? Whoa! Jeez, I think we've got a big roach here. Pop me and hook him out under this because little pups come out. If that's a pure roach, that's a good one. Don't really know what to make of it, so I'm gonna weigh it, take a couple of pictures of it, and then if it is a true roach, I'll put a little note below. One pound, five ounce. <laughs> I don't know, the fins are are very red, they're too red for an eyed, I would say. Very roach-like. She's got a bit of mouth damage, so it's hard to tell. I uh, think I'm going with pure roach though, that's my bet. One pound, five ounce roach. Got all quality fish today. sometimes. Well that's it for me. Unfortunately we're now at the point where it's too dark to film. Uh, I might give it another 10-15 minutes just see if I can get a big fish. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. We had what, five big perch, a really nice roach and a few bits of silver thrown in as well. And what I've got to do now is run home, get this edited to upload it for Sunday because some of you guys don't even realise you've got work the next day unless, unless I upload a video. <laughs> yeah, it's brilliant. Thank you so much for watching. Give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you next time. Can't believe it, one last fish. Oh, I need to come off. <laughs> you probably can't see me, but it's only a small one. <laughs> Let's go.